so our panel. And then I give the floor to Ali. Ali, uh, Steph already presented you. Um, so the floor is yours. Great, thank you. I'll just get my slides up. So uh, thank you very much, Marika. Um, I'm Ali Bloom from the UK Data Service. And for the first part of this Roadshow event, I'm going to introduce you to the CESDA Data Catalog, as well as some other places you can search for data. I'm going to give a quick introduction to some key COVID-19 data sets that are available in Europe. And finally, I'm going to give a quick demo on how to use and access the newly renovated CESDA Data Catalog. Okay, so starting with places um, to find COVID-19 data. So over the last 18 months, um, lots of data on COVID-19 has been collected and made available by data producers. And this comes from a variety of sources. We have existing surveys which have had new questions added. We have new surveys that have been commissioned to specifically study the pandemic and its impacts and other sources as well, such as administrative and government data. And I'll go into this a bit more later on. But when you're looking for data, when you're looking for any kind of data, there are many places that you can start your search. And I'm going to run a few, run through a few of these now. And um, these recommendations all come from the CESDA DMEG, which, um, as we've said, you'll hear a bit more about later on in the roadshow. So the first place you might want to start looking for data is search engines. So you can use search engines to look for organizations which hold data on the topics that you're interested in. And if you add keywords such as data archive or data set to the end of your search term, this will help you bring up more relevant results. So as you can see here, I've added COVID-19 data and added archive to the end, and it's brought up a couple of interesting places where I could find um, COVID-19 data. Another place you might want to look is a data list or a data hub. And data hubs or themed pages bring together data sets on a particular topic. So for example, if you were looking for COVID-19 data, which we are, um, you might consult the UK Data Services COVID-19 theme page. And this page brings together popular key data sets on the theme of COVID-19. Or you might want to look at the United Nations COVID-19 data hub. And this brings together response data to COVID, so nations responses to COVID, um, from many individual nations, as well as geospatial data, and it's designed to be sort of easily downloaded in lots of different formats um, and can be used for the production of maps, data visualizations, and lots of other analysis. So data hubs are a good, um, a good starting point, especially if you want data on a particular theme. You might also want to consult a registry of data repositories or archives. So this is a tool that allows researchers to search lists of many existing repositories. So the example that I've got here is re3data.org and this uh, lists over 2,000 data repositories from lots of different research disciplines and you can search by subject, content type, country and this is really useful if you want to find trusted archives and data sources and it's also super useful that it has search terms down the side such as data access restrictions so you can really find those repositories that you will have access to. Now Good research should always provide citations of the data that's been used in it, but um, you can also consult data journals. Now, data journals publish descriptions of data sets which have scientific value, and they also publish research texts on the sharing and the reuse of scientific data. So the example that I've got here is Scientific Data, which is a branch journal to nature, and this is, it has a collection of open data um, dedicated to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, this, um, this data is mostly scientific, but it does have some citizen science and kind of behavioural data in there too. So that's just one example of the kind of things you can find in a data journal. And finally, we have data catalogues. So data catalogues index specific selections of data resources, and they usually contain metadata, documentation and information on how or where to download and access this data. And the examples I put up here are the UK Data Service and also the CESDA Data Catalogue, which I'm going to introduce a little bit more now. So the CESDA Data Catalogue is the main data catalogue for Europe and it is described as a one-stop shop for research and discovery, enabling access to extensive collections of data relevant to social science research 
and including issues related to the COVID-19 pandemic, which is obviously what we're looking at today. Now, the data catalogue contains the metadata for over 30,000 collections held by CESDA members, and many of its member archives can be searched from this one place. And it currently has over 280 COVID-19 data sets and counting. So here is an example of some of the archives that can be searched through the CESDA data catalogue. So we have um, GASIS, FORS, NSD, and these are only a few examples. So what data are available in the CESDA data catalogue? Well, the catalogue holds lots of different kinds of data, including cross-national data, such as the European Working Conditions Survey, country-specific data, such as uh, data on Swedish national elections or the British Social Attitudes Survey, labour force surveys, household panel surveys such as Understanding Society, and general social surveys. And I'll go a little bit more into the CESDA data catalogue in the demonstration later on. So now we know potential places for finding data, what kind of COVID data are available in Europe? So there's lots of different kinds of data. And this includes survey data, which I'll go into a bit more detail about um, later on. Administrative or government data. So for example, crime rates and how these have changed over the lockdown period. Visualizations of data, such as the UK's COVID-19 interactive map or information is beautiful's data dashboard. Testing data from PCR or antibody testing results. The analysis of COVID-19 and opinions around it through big data sources such as Twitter or other social media sites. And geographic data, which has been used to kind of track the spread. So these are the kinds of data that are available. And now I'm going to go into a few examples of available COVID-19 survey data. And I've chosen survey data because I think it, it demonstrates kind of the variety of data available. But as we've said in the previous slide, there's so many, so many different kinds of data available, so you obviously don't just have to stick to survey data. And I'm going to give examples of some cross-national data sets that cover multiple countries or the whole of Europe. And I'm also going to give examples of um, some data sets that cover individual countries and areas. So starting with the cross-national data sets. So the first example I have is the Share Corona survey. And this is a sub-survey of the Survey of Health, Ageing and Retirement in Europe. And it collects data on the same topics as the regular SHARE questionnaire, if any of you have heard of it, but it's been shortened and targeting to measure um, respondents' COVID-19 living situation. It uses a sub-sample of SHARE's panel respondents across 27 European countries and Israel, all of whom are aged 50 or older. It used computer-assisted telephone interviewing to collect um, the data. And what's really interesting and useful about this data is that it allows for both cross-country and longitudinal analysis. And um, Share themselves say that the data can be useful for things such as um, comparing economic crises. So by looking at previous waves, we can see things like the impact of the 2008 financial um, crash compared to the financial impact of the COVID um, crisis. And the data can be downloaded from the Share Data Research Centre. You just need to register as a Share user and that can be done on their website. And it contains questions on health and health behaviour. So it covers things such as general health before and after the COVID-19 outbreak, whether people have been following safety measures. It also covers mental health. So things such as anxiety and depression, sleeping problems or loneliness. Infections and in healthcare, so whether people have experienced COVID-19 related um, symptoms or an infection, um, whether they've gone for medical treatment or they haven't and whether they're satisfied with that. It also tracks changes in work and economic situations such as business closures, working hours and working from home, income and financial support. And finally, it looks at social networks. So how in contact have people been with their family and friends? Um, and what help have they given and received to others throughout this pandemic? 
And just to give a bit of an idea of how data like this has been used to study the pandemic, um, here's an example of a couple of research projects that have used this data. So there's one looking at um, whether there's an inequality in healthcare needs being met across Europe. And there's another one which looks at how those who are retired responded to the pandemic. So another example of a cross-national data set is the European Parliament COVID-19 survey. And this survey samples European citizens aged 16 to 64. So for some states, this is 16 to 54. And I think for Malta, it's um, everyone 16 plus. And it asks them about their views on the pandemic. It covers 21 EU member states and has three rounds and it ran from April 2020 to October 2020. Um, and the metadata and the links to access this are available through the CESDA data catalogue. And the questions that it covers includes things like satisfactions with the government, so how people feel about things such as um, balancing the economy and um, restrictions and health, Satisfaction with the solidarity of EU member states, how much awareness there is, the response from different states and the measures that they're taking. Attitude to limits on individual freedom and really interestingly ask questions about the use of mobile phone data in tracking um, the spread of COVID. So that how people feel about that balance between um, liberty and collecting information. It also tracks um, emotional status and how people feel about the pandemic. Um, as well as the effect on income, employment, food and finance. Again, it looks at the help individuals have received and given to others, whether they've engaged with um, online information and how much they trust the sources they're seeing. As we know, misinformation is a, a huge problem throughout this pandemic. Also, how they view the EU and whether they participate in EU elections, as well as the usual demographic information, date of interview and weighting variables. So those are some of the cross-national data sets that can be used to look at trends across lots of different areas. But now we're going to take a look at, oh, I've skipped a slide, apologies. So yeah, this is an example of um, some of the outputs from this survey. So again, you can see how this has been used, like I was saying, to um, show the trends across Europe as a whole and the opinions and attitudes of how people are feeling. And they've produced um, quite a lot of these. So do go and have a look at them. They're very interesting. Okay, so now on to the individual country data sets. So the first example of this I have is the GASIS panel special survey on the coronavirus SARS-CoV-2 outbreak in Germany. And the aim of this survey was to collect timely data on the effect of COVID-19 on people's daily lives. It uses a subsample, about three quarters of the GASIS online panel respondents. And this has been a lot of existing surveys response to the pandemic. Using existing respondents allows a rapid response. And like we say, the aim of this survey was to collect a timely response on the effect of COVID-19. So you might find that quite a lot of surveys that you're already familiar with have sampled from their existing pools to ask questions about COVID. So if you're looking for data, that also might be another good place to start, seeing if those existing um, surveys have, have stepped into looking at COVID. So, and the questions for this survey, uh, risk perception, so for example, how likely individuals think they are to get um, infected with COVID. Risk minimization measures, so are people hand washing, social distancing, um, what are they doing to minimize their risk of COVID-19. Evaluation of political measures and individuals compliance, so how do they feel about daily life restrictions, particular to this study, and I think the situation in Germany was whether individuals are adhering to a curfew. Trust in politics and institutions, uh, both local and global. So I think it measures trust in the World Health Organization, which is really interesting. Whether there's been a change in employment situation. So again, job loss, working hours, um, whether people are working from home. Also very interesting questions on childcare. So who is doing the childcare during the pandemic? Is it grandparents, family members? Um, you know, different, uh, different people than would normally be with the closure of um, childcare settings. And finally, media consumption. So again, information sources that have been um, used for COVID, especially particularly online sources. And this survey has been used to do studies into protective behaviour, so whether people are protecting themselves from COVID, 
to look at uneven consequences of COVID, so whether there's inequality, um, the use of the internet for risk information, so what are people looking at online to get their information, and also the impact of education. So my final example today uh, comes from uh, Statistics Finland, and it's the Citizens Pulse survey. And this was a web-based survey that examined attitudes and opinions in the context of COVID-19. So the respondents were 15 to 74, resided in mainland Finland, and were sampled from those who had taken part in previous surveys and agreed to be contacted in the The survey is conducted every three weeks, with the group of respondents changing every round, and it has been going on since April 2020. And again, the metadata and links can be accessed through the CESDA data catalogue if this is something you're interested in looking at. And the questions cover the following topics. Again, views on the activity and the communication of authorities. Compliance with regulations. Future expectations, so how people expect um, everything to go after the pandemic, if we can have an after. Um, trust and individuals' mental state of mind. And also questions on health and well-being, livelihood and general concerns relating to everyday life. So those are just a few um, quick examples of some COVID-19 data. We've given you a bit of a deep dive into the specific examples to show the kind of questions they cover. But if you're interested in more data sets and sources from the CESDA archive, CESDA have produced a really useful booklet on behavioural social science data. Um, and this booklet will guide you through some more of the data sets that are available from different archives and links to the sort of um, different resources different archives have for COVID-19 data. So that's really worth looking, taking a look at if you want some more information. So I hope that's given you a quick rundown of the data that's available. And now I'm going to give a quick demonstration of how you could search for studies like these in the COVID-19, uh, in the CESDA data catalogue. So bear with me a second while I just switch my screen. Okay. One second, sorry. Always goes smooth in the practice and then... Uh... Thanks, Ella. We can see it perfectly. Right. Yeah. It's all sorted. Thank you. Brilliant. Okay, I think my computer was just a bit slow catching up. Okay, so as we were saying earlier, the CESDA data catalogue has um, recently been updated in February 2021 with some new search and accessibility features. And I'm just going to give a quick rundown of those now with um, COVID-19 as our example, as it's the theme of this roadshow. So the first thing to know is if you want to access the CESDA data catalogue, you're going to want to go to datacatalogue.cesda.eu. Okay, so now we know how to find the catalogue. Let's take a look at some of the key features. So the first thing to highlight here is the search feature. Here you can type in keywords relating to the kind of data or topic that you're looking for. So for example, I might type in uh, COVID-19 and we can see that there are 234 um, studies that mention COVID-19 that the catalogue has picked up. Now, something that's really important to know, um, especially when you're searching for data in COVID-19, is that everyone uses slightly different search terms. So while I've searched COVID-19 here, if I had searched um, coronavirus, 76 studies are found, or if I'd search Corona, 150 are found. And this is just a little quirk of how we talk about COVID-19, the different terms that everyone uses. But it is also something that's really important to bear in mind if you are searching data that comes from different nations, different countries, different organisations who might use different terms. And um, something that kind of, kind of helped with this and another key feature of the catalogue is the um, language feature so you can set the language that you want the data to be in so if I wanted data in German um, I could set it to German um, I'm going to put it back to English for now but that's a really useful feature as well okay so the next thing that we want to look at is the filters on the side so here are lots of different filters that can be applied to narrow down your search so the first one we'll look at is the topic search and this uses the CESDA classification, which goes through the whole, um, the whole catalogue across all of the studies if they've been tagged with it. So at this time, there isn't a dedicated tag for COVID-19, but we can search things such as general health, um, medication, 
So whether we're looking for particular treatments, epidemiology is another one we can search. And that can be very useful if you want to narrow down a particular topic or a particular theme. We can also use down to data which covers particular years. So obviously for COVID-19, we know that no data will exist before 2020. So if we set our um, scale to 2020, this will give us um, the data from 2020. It would also be useful if you were looking for data on other topics, but you wanted it to be from 2020, um, perhaps to sort of study the impact of COVID, but not directly. And again, if we want the most up-to-date data, we can set this to 2021 and we can see that this is, uh, if I press search again, this should be giving me the most um, up-to-date um, data set. So here we go, it's refreshed now. So we can see 2021, so we can set it so we get the data sets from, from this year. Um, and again, as we can see, the filters can be applied at the same time. So my search is happening and my filter is applied at the same time. You can also search by data from a, that covers a specific country. So again, you can select this from a list. But something that's important to note is that if the country hasn't been tagged in the metadata and not all um, data sets have been tagged with countries, it, even if it's, it's from a particular country, um, it might not show up if you use this country search. So again, you can just type this in the search bar at the top um, and the data should, should come up. And finally, you can also search by publisher. So again, here's the list of some of the publishers that I highlighted earlier who write the metadata for the, um, for the catalog entry. So again, if you perhaps know that there's a particular publisher that you have access through, um, you can select these and narrow it down to data from that particular publisher. Okay, so now we know how the catalog works. I'm just going to give a quick example. So let's take a look at a data set. Um, so I'm going to type in COVID. Let's see. Okay, so we'll use the Understanding Society um, COVID-19 data. So if we click on this, it should take us to the summary information page. So this is all the metadata for this, um, this entry. So here we can see the study title and the creator and the study number. And this might be um, internal to the archive or there might be a wider one. The abstract, which gives us information on what the data is about. Again, this might look different depending on the provider. The methodology. So this is really useful if you're looking for data that covers a particular period, um, data that analyzes a particular unit or is longitudinal. And at the bottom, the really important section is the access section. So under the terms of access, we can see whether um, we're able to access the data because obviously lots of the data sets have different access requirements. So here we can see this is a special license data set. So a special license, um, an additional application would have to be made to access this data. But again, we see it can be accessed um, in the European Economic Area. Okay, so another thing to flag is these tags at the bottom. So this topic tag is the same as the one that we were looking at on the left hand side earlier. And this, um, it might be that you find a study, but you're not exactly sure of what, the, what tag you want to use. And then you click into a study and you can find the topic tag here. So if I thought, yes, social behavior and attitudes, that's exactly what I'm looking for. I can click on that and it will search automatically, um, apply the tag and search through the catalog. The same thing applies with the keywords. So if I click on a keyword, it will search um, through the catalog for that. The final thing we'll look at is how to actually access the data. So this can be done with the access data button at the top of the screen. And as we can see, this has taken us to the UK data service, which is the archive that holds this data. And this has taken us to the DOI page that has the latest updated links to the data. So obviously this will look different depending on which archive you're accessing the data through. But if I just click on the catalog record here, it should load, and this will take us through to where we can access the data. The final thing, if you have any more questions about the catalog search, there is a user guide available if you click on the top right of the banner. And this gives you some really useful information on how to conduct more advanced searches using Boolean and search operators um, 
if you really want to narrow down your search to a particular kind of data set. So thank you very much. Um, and I'm now going to hand back to our researchers who I think are going to give us a, a, a good introduction to some COVID data. Thanks everyone. Thanks Ali, thanks a lot. It was very interesting to see that the CESA data catalog is meant as a, as a one-stop shop for, uh, for data sets uh, for researchers to find their data sets that they can uh, work with.